hey guys welcome back to shayna's home diy and crafts in today's video i'll be showing you how to create your home diy wood round door hanger if you want to see what i do so keep watching so for this video i'm going to be using an 18 inch wood round and i purchased this wood round from lowe's you can also purchase these wood round from the home depot okay so what i'm doing here i am going to be taking this wood outside and i'm going to be sanding it down okay so what i'm doing here i'm looking at the both side of the wood to find out which side looks more neater or nicer and i'm going to choose that side so i first sent it down with a 100 grit sandpaper then i went ahead and i used a 200 grit sandpaper to smooth that off now we're inside i skipped that part out and we're going to be using um, my minwax um wood finish in the color of dark walnut and i'm just going to use a popsicle stick and i'm going to start it around just to make sure everything is all mixed out this paint this finish been in my basement for over a year now i have it for a while i've done numerous amount of projects so this little um, can of wood finish can take you a far away. So now I play, place my wood round on those little painter stand and I'm gonna use a piece of cotton old t-shirt, wipe my popsicle stick off and then I'm just gonna go ahead and just stain across the wood. Now guys, when you're staining across the wood, you wanna make sure you wear gloves or you could just get stained on your hands. I don't know how that's gonna turn out for you, but yes. Um, so wipe across. Now when you're wiping your stain across the wood, the, you could, the darker you want your wood to be, the heavier you go on your stain and the lighter you want your wood to be, then the lighter you go on your stain, or you could just continue rub, rub until you rub it all out, okay? So now we're all done staining our wood, and I'm just rubbing out to make sure everything is nice and smooth. I am going to be taking this wood outside to dry for a few hours. So now after a few hours the wood is dry, I took it back inside and I'm going to be using my painter tape guys and I'm going to um, part this wood or mark this wood in a half. So the wood has grain and lines to it guys, take advantage of these grains or line. So I'm using that to make sure I have a nice straight line instead of using a ruler to place my painter tape across, okay? Now guys, once I figure out where I want to place my painter tape, I want to make sure I rub nicely or put a little bit of force on the tape while you rub it across the wood because I'm going to be painting the ha half of this wood and I do not want the paint to bleed. So I want to make sure I have a nice tight seal so that's why I'm rubbing to make sure everything is nicely um, sit on the wood. Now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to be using my Waverly Chart paint in the color of white and a foam brush roller to um, paint the half of the wood. So I have a little plate here and I'm just going to pour some paint. So now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to take my roller and I'm going to paint the half of the wood. Now guys when you're doing the painting your half side of your wood or your full wood whichever you choose to do just make sure you go very gently or light with your roller. You don't want to put too much pressure because one of the last thing you want to do is put so much pressure. When you put all that pressure on the um, roller, it seeps through the painter tape and then you might have some problem with bleeding and it's going to be very hard or take up some time to fix that. So you want to do prevent is better than to cure, okay? Also guys, you want to make sure you get the side of the, the part that you're going to paint white or whichever color you choose. Don't forget to paint the sides of your wood, the side of your wood as well, okay? So guys, because I have a busy day and I'm very impatient as well, <laughs> I am using a blow dryer to speed up my process. I live in New York and it's super cold here. I've done this video a while now, just can't get to post it as I have bad allergy and I can't talk and I definitely needed to do a voiceover for this video. Once I was done drying the paint with my blow dryer, I went ahead and I added a second coat of um, Waverly Chart paint on my wood. Oh guys, I also forget to mention, I dried this on cool with my blow dryer. I didn't use warm. Um, I'm, I'm assuming 
heat with paint probably will probably melt it up. I don't know, but I use cool, cool on, well, sorry, I can't talk. I use cool while I was doing the blow dry, dryer method. <laughs> And here is the big part. This part is the most satisfying part ever of doing painting. When you're peeling back your paint. So guys, if you notice, I look like a crab or a lobster. I don't know. Type in the comment section, let me know which one I look like, a crab or a lobster, while peeling this tape off. Because I do not want to touch the brown part of the wood, which is stained. I have paint on my hand, and I don't want to leave any mark of paint on the wood. If you notice, like, Right around the front there, around the round part, you could see a little bit of white, but I'm gonna use a wet cloth to wipe that off. But if you really look closely, you could see some white part. That's where my hands were. But anyways, so now I am done peeling off my tape and that's what my would look like. So I, after drying it, I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to be cleaning off the white part with 91% alcohol. And the reason why I'm cleaning this with 91% alcohol is I'm gonna be adding my decal. So I want to make sure there is no dust or fur or anything that would prevent my decal from sticking to the wood. So now I have my decal and I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna peel that up. I'm peeling up the whole thing from my Cricut mat and I'm just gonna turn that over and peel the backing off as it's way easier. And this way you're safe that your vinyl is gonna stick to your transfer tape. So I'm just gonna go ahead once I'm done doing that, I'm gonna line that up with my um, sign. And once I get it lined up how I want it, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my squeegee and I'm gonna burnish over that so it could stick to the the wood. Anyone want to type in the comment section and tell me what this sign says? <laughs> Please go ahead and type me a comment in the comment section and let me know what this sign said. Oh well, you probably already know what this sign said from my thumbnail, but anyways, there is something going on with this sign, I'm just waiting to hear from you guys. Oopsie, there we go, a part of my um, decal was coming up, so you just want to go back over that if that happens and burnish more, and then pull from a different section of the, the transfer tape. So you want to pull that back slowly and you want to just burnish as you pull because um, if you have problem with pieces coming up, that's what was going on there, pieces was staying down. So I just went from a different side and I'm pulling off slowly. Now you guys already know what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna be saving this piece of transfer tape. So yes, guys, where's the E for my home sweet home on the sign? And where is the, what's 018? I don't know. So guess what? I was chatting away with my mom while creating this um, decal and I wasn't paying attention and I lost my E and my two. Um, so I had to go back in and recut it. I, I lost it by not paying attention and it got stick to the vine and I got frustrated like, you know what, screw this, throw it in the trash, let's go recut it. So that's what I did, I recut the E's and the two for the 2018. So that's what I was asking you guys, if you see what's wrong with my sign. So if you're watching up to this point, then you know what was wrong with my sign. Yes, we are crafters and we do make mistakes. Everything is not perfect. It looks perfect, but it's not perfect, you know. Anyways, let's continue to burnish and get those two E into the home sweet home. Thank you. 
and there we go now my sign looking all beautiful it said home sweet home i'm gonna be taking this outside and i'm gonna use it in my mad podge sealer to seal it we'll be back so now this is what my sign looks like after i seal it you could already start seeing the sheen on it isn't that beautiful isn't she lovely isn't she wonderful anyways enough for me so what i'm gonna be doing here guys i'm gonna be using what they call this my jute twine and i'm gonna cut three pieces because i'm gonna make a braid now for this step you can use ribbon you could use nautical rope but i chose to go the extra mile because i'm extra sometimes and i'm making this for a good friend of mine she's my co-worker so i'm going in and i'm braiding three pieces of jute twine together to make my hanger again guys you can use ribbon or you could use nautical rope which is way easier you don't have to do all of this stuff that i'm doing here like i'm crazy so i'm going to use some hot glue and i'm just going to seal the um end of my braid and then I, i'm going to fold it in half just to make sure i have a nice loop then i'm going to use a lighter guys guys do not try this at home i repeat do not try this at home i don't want you to burn your house down and then you said oops shayna told um i saw shayna did it on her channel so what i'm doing here with my lighter i am just burning the excess of what do you call it furriness off the rope so it could look more neater it looks more nicer now i'm gonna flip my sign over and i have it on one of the fiona wee wee pad she doesn't even use them anyway so why not use them so i'm gonna be using my staple gun and i'm gonna put some pressure up on this um staple gun to staple my um hanger or my jute twine to the back of my sign guys if you notice the back of my sign i did not paint it why painting it i'm not using it she's not going to use it and if she does the settees then she can bring it back to me and we could work on that we want to save material we're not going to do what's not showing so here we go we're going to make our bow guys i just talk so much as i miss talking to you guys anyways let's make our bow so i'm going to be using two different ribbon to make my bow i'm going to be using this dark color what do you call this i don't know but I'm gonna be using this dark color, burlap. Yes, burlap, that's what they call it. Then I'm gonna be using my buffalo check plaid in black and white to create my bow. So I already measure and I cut, um, and I'm just gonna re-measure the burlap with the buffalo check to get the same measurement. Guys, if you do not like how I make the bow for this tutorial, I am gonna be having a link on how to make your own bowl really quick and easy it's about five minutes long in my description box below it's also gonna be popping up in that high card above so you can go ahead and check that out I want to mention to you guys you want to make sure your ribbon um you know what side is the right side some ribbon are two-sided and some ribbon are one-sided like the burlap that was two-sided the um the buffalo check is two-sided that's why you saw me looking at it to make sure i don't do it on the opposite side and even if i do it on the opposite side we just push it inside out it will work anyway so don't stress it or sweat it if you feel like you um did it backwards you could just like literally turn it out inside out and there we go okay I also want to mention that these ribbons are wired ribbon. It's better to use wired ribbon as you'll get them to stand up and puff the way you want them. So all I'm doing, I'm just using hot glue to um, form these ribbons together to create the bow. Then I am going to use a piece of um, twine, what they call this wire, floral wire, to uh, to tie that in. Now you do not have to use the floral wire because the hot glue will hold together. But again, Shayna is extra, and I don't want this to fall apart. It's not gonna fall apart, but it's just me. I'm just extra. I have to just put extra. My mom said I'm too extra. She's right. Yes, mom, I know you're watching and you, you're right. You are actually right, okay? Anyways, enough with me and my mom's story. So I'm just repeating the step and I'm gonna 
take the burlap and I'm going to do the same thing. But I'm going to place... Did I just say burlap? <laughs> oh, yes, you did. You just said burlap. Anyway, guys, it's not burlap. I, f I can't talk. It's the buffalo check ribbon. So what I'm trying to say here, guys, bypass all that I just said. I'm not even going to delete it. But what I'm saying is... I'm going to be taking my buffalo check ribbon and I'm going to be placing it opposite side of my burlap, meaning one burlap in between each burlap, we're going to have a buffalo check. If you know what I mean, you're going to see, just keep watching. You'll see what I'm doing. If I can't explain it, then I could show it. Okay. So that's what I'm doing. So put some hot glue on. We're pressing that down and we want to make sure everything is nice and sealed and tight there. So now we're going to measure how long we're going to have our, I call this ducktail or bird tail. Jesus, what's wrong with me? I can't remember anything. So anyways, cutting some ribbon here to make the, the ducktail and I'm doing the same thing with both ribbon, okay? Oh yes guys I did it I did it I did it look at that bow look at that bow it was more complicated to explain it than it looks like I'm pretty sure it was but anyways here we go so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna finish up this bow we're gonna use the burlap to make the last part of our ducktail and once we put our ducktail on with the burlap ribbon we're gonna go ahead and get that down on our sign seal it and secure it all right so yes i know i know it guys we're still not done we're going to be putting some of this what they call these baby bread if it's not baby bread i don't think it's leucalypsus but i think they're baby bread again if you guys been here for a while with me you know i'm horrible at flowers i just know how to put them together if it's your first time here you just learned something new about me so now we're going to use some staple and some blue hot glue and secure that um baby bread on the back of the flowers and mute my still self use my staple gun and you see what happened anyways we're almost there guys and now we're putting all of that stuff that i just put together that looks very complicated uh we're gonna get it on our sign okay so i'm gonna be using generous amount of hot glue generous because i want to make sure this stick and don't fall off i'm using the gorilla um, hot glue stick so we're using generous amount and we're gonna place that on it then stick it to our sign
I'm gonna be using my lighter to burn the end of the ribbon. This way it won't unravel. The buffalo check one does unravel. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just sealing the end with the lighter. Do not try this at home, guys. Do not try this at home. I do not want anything to happen to you to hurt yourself and you blame it on me, okay? And we are almost there guys yes we're almost there so now we're going to do the next step and the next step is we're going to be adding some wooden bead to this sign so here I have two different size wooden beads and I'm using a large wooden bead and I am just going to place that on my jute twine and I'm going to measure from the bow how long I want this um, bead wooden bead to hang Once I got my measurement and cut my jute twine, I'm going to tie off that bead by itself. Then I'm going to use some hot glue to put at the end of my jute twine to, just to make it easier to um, add the beads to it. So now I'm going to go ahead and add beads to it. All right guys, so we're getting closer and closer. So now we're gonna make some tassel to hang at the end of the wooden bead. Yes, I know, we're still going. We're making tassels, okay? So now that's what I'm doing. I cut these, not even, sorry, the jute twine and I am gonna fold it in a half. And I'm just gonna keep folding in a half until I get the tassel to be where I want it to be, the length of what I want it to be. Then I'm just gonna take a small piece of jute twine and tie around that to hold it in place. Keep watching, you're gonna see. Once I tie and have my tassel ready, I'm gonna use my scissors to cut the bottom half of the folding and that's what's gonna create my tassel. So there we go. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tie my tassel to the bottom part of my bead. So now we're all done making our tassel and I'm going to go ahead and attach that to my sign. So I'm going to be using a little bit of hot glue and I want to make sure I pull the, those little tiny parts to the front. Put my hot glue on the back where I made the original knot for the big um, bead and I'm just going to place it right in the center of my bow. And finally we're done with this sign. Look how beautiful this turned out. I absolutely love it. It's gorgeous. It's super beautiful, guys. Very nice.
So with all that has been said, if you made it as far throughout the video and if you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button, click that notification bell. Also make sure you share this video with your friends and family, this way they won't miss out. I want to thank you guys so so much for your continuous love and support. I wouldn't have been this far without you guys and I appreciate you so much. Now remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Until next time, be blessed.